Hello there all you kitty cats and how are you today? Today I'm going to be starting the first episode of my series. My name is Mixi Sierra and I will be doing mythology and makeup today. So if you like astrology, if you like mythology or history, and if you like makeup, be sure to like and subscribe. Today we'll be going into the mythology behind the zodiac sign of Aries. Keep in mind that all myths have different versions and variations, so the one that you may be familiar with may not be the one I'm talking about today. Today's video is scripted based off of a podcast from Spotify called Mythology by Parcast. Um, they source their material based off of Greco-Roman mythology and history. Um, so even though this version may not be the one that you're familiar with, I hope you stick around and enjoy the story regardless. A warning for today's story, this story contains mention of death and animal cruelty. So in this video, I will be going over the mythology behind the sign Aries while doing my makeup at the same time. The makeup isn't involved necessarily, but it's just something for me to do while I tell the story to you guys. So even if you're not into astrology, um, I encourage you to listen to the story because it's quite interesting just to know. And then now you'll know all that information for your Aries out there, for the people that you know in your life that are also Aries, or if you're an Aries yourself. I am going to put my hair back to do makeup and we're going to get into today's story. For this video, I will be looking at a script just off camera. So if you see me looking down here, that's why I haven't memorized my script or anything. And this is my first video of the series. So bear with me a little bit, if you will. And let's get right into it. So just to the east of Pisces, there's a constellation that Asians believe to be shaped like a ram. You know, the constellation of the stars, there's all the different zodiacs that are tied to them. Aries rules those born from March 21st to April 19th. Um, for all my Aries out there who aren't into astrology, if you're born between those dates, this story is for you. <laughs> or if you know someone born between those dates, this story is going to probably explain a little bit more about their personality. Not directly, but you know, in turn. So Aries is actually the first sign of the zodiac. Um, it's a sign in spring, March to April, um, and it represents rebirth and new growth. It's the youngest sign as well. Um, so it's like in the astrology, uh, in the zodiac calendar, Aries is like, Aries starts off the year. In Greco-Roman mythology, Aries is also known as the golden fleece. But before he was a fleece, it was actually a living ram. And that's what our story is about today. So. so Prince Phrixus and Princess Heli are some of our main characters for today. Um, so remember those names. Prince Phrixus and his little sister Heli were sat before a huge feast their father had prepared for them, despite the fact that their kingdom was in famine. Like you're gonna have this huge feast while your entire kingdom is in famine. Like, make it make sense but you know they're the king's children so i guess whatever flies now this feast this wasn't like a thanksgiving feast like a ooh, fun party like uh, get together like let's feast and drink and have all the food and fun that we want this feast was supposed to be like a last meal for them um you see the king their dad in order to allegedly save the kingdom was going to sacrifice his own kids to the gods all because some oracle like a like a medium you know like mm, i see the future like you have to kill your children like this oracle told him to and so he was like okay like to save my kingdom from famine i'm gonna kill my kids like or maybe you just could moderate the food that you're happy to save your kingdom? I don't know. Anyways, that's none of the business. So the kids know this. Like, the kids know that this is their last meal. And they're sitting in this room like, damn, this is for real our last meal. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, they're in this room alone, right? Like, it's just uh, Prince Phrixus and Heli. And, like, they're sitting in this room, like, that's, like, the doors are, like, guarded. Like, they cannot leave this room. Because it's, like, this is their last meal. Like, they are being fed this beast and then they're going to be like executed the next morning or something like that and it's like or sacrificed the next morning for like nothing these are children we're talking about these are children literal children so they're sitting in this room and they're like dang this is our last meal and the little sister is crying because well duh like 
wouldn't you cry? Like she's a child and she's like, oh, like this is my last piece before I get fucking killed. Like sacrifice to save the kingdom. Sacrifice because my own father is like, yeah, you need to die. Because some random woman is like, oh, I see the future. You need to kill your children. Anyways, so the little sister's crying, but big bro over here, Prince Frixis, is like a real one trying to find a way out for both of them. Cause he's like, I am not going down like this. You know, like he is trying to find a solution. He's doing the thing, being the man in the situation, even though he's just a little bit of a little boy. Like he is trying to find a way out for him and his sister. Because he's like, I am not gonna sit here and take this. Like, you're not gonna kill me. We're gonna find a way to make it work and we're gonna get out of this alive. So like he's being a support for his little sister. Like he is trying to find solutions, you know, like windows, like secret ways out of this room that they're guarded in. So Prince Frixis walks over to the open window um, in the room looking for a way out. He had been to this window like several times throughout the day or like the time that they were in this room. And like he couldn't find a way out through the window but you know, he was still trying. He was still like not gonna give up. Like he still had hope that maybe something could happen and like maybe they could climb out the window or something, you know. But he goes over this window and he all of a sudden sees this figure like flying towards him. Like he's he's looking at the same window he's been looking at like all day. But all of a sudden there's like something like flying, like like owl, like I don't know, something, you know, there's like something flying in towards the window. And he's like, okay, weird. And so like he does the smart thing like moves out of the way and then all of a sudden this ram comes flying into the room and starts talking to them like first of all you're a ram like a sheep like you can talk second of all you're flying third of all why are you like none of this is normal <laughs> keep in mind this is like mythology so it's like you know there's a bunch of things like that that like don't make sense to us like current day but regardless, it was weird to see a talking flying ram. Mm, out of the ordinary, if you will. So this ram starts telling them like about how he was sent from Jupiter, which is the king of the gods. I think Jupiter is like Zeus in some scenarios. Like it just depends on what version of mythology you're, you're looking at. Um, so he's telling them that he was sent from Jupiter who like, you know, like that's who they were gonna be sacrificed to essentially. And he was gonna, like the ram came there and he was like, I was sent from Jupiter to save you from the sacrifice. Like, how confusing is that? Like, you're telling me we're supposed to be sacrificed to the God that just sent you to save us? Like, it seems like there's a little bit of mis miscommunication going on, on on this day. So Frixis, the bigger brother is like, um, what do you mean like Jupiter sent you? Because I thought that like you know and like also like who are you what are you to be coming in here and like tell me this like like why should i believe you like you say you're sent from jupiter but like you're a flying talking ram and like that's not typical like he's just all around confused you know there's a lot of confusion going on it's like i don't know what's going on anymore all i know is i don't want to die <laughs> so really the gag of it all like what the aries like came there to like the aries the ram came there to like tell them was he was like here's the gag you know the oracle that told you like your parents that you needed to be sacrificed to save the kingdom yeah she was lying she's lying she's actually fed a lie by your mother so the the children's mother is granted okay it's their stepmom so like evil stepmom situation you know like the kid's stepmother told this oracle they needed to be sacrificed. Like, oh, she's like, she like fed the oracle lie. She was like, my husband's gonna come see you. And he's gonna ask like, what do I do to save the kingdom? And you're gonna tell him that his children need to die. Like how twisted, damn bitch, you really killing kids out here? For what? For what? Maybe she just wanted the throne. She didn't want the like younger sister to have it. Like Heli, like maybe she like, I don't know what. She got issues, okay? You trying to kill kids out here? You got issues. But the king believed it regardless. So like the king is like having them executed for essentially no reason at all. Like it's not gonna fix anything. And that's why like Jupiter sent them there because he, like Jupiter was like, nah, nah, don't you sacrifice these kids to me. 
because I don't want that sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice I asked for, and it's not a sacrifice that is needed. Thank you. So the ram is like, okay, like Jupiter gave me wings to come save y'all. Like, I'm gonna get you out of here. We're gonna go somewhere safe. There's this kingdom that like is already ready for you. Like, we gonna get you somewhere that like, you gonna have a safe space at. So they hop on the ram's back and it just so happens that they like literally are flying out the window on the ram's back like as the guards come in to like retrieve the kids to like go to the execution. So this ram is literally like Frixis and Heli's like saving grace. Like they were literally like at the last few moments of like life and they were just children. So like they're so happy, you know, they're on the, the Aries like back, like, oh my God, we're free now. And Aries is over here feeling super proud of himself, right? He's like, I saved the children. I was sent by the king of gods, like I'm doing the damn thing and looking good while doing it. So he's taking the kids to this kingdom, right? That I just mentioned, like he is explaining it to them like on the ride. And he's like, I'm taking you to this kingdom. I think it's called Colchis. I might be saying that right. I'm sorry, I did look up how to say it beforehand, but I don't know if I'm saying it right. He's like, I'm gonna take you to Colchis, um, but it's kind of a far ride, okay? Um, she'll be safe when you get there, but it's gonna be quite the ride there. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've never taken a ride on a flying ram before, so I feel like I wouldn't expect it to be super fast. And it's gonna be far away, like, that's probably quite the ride. Like, imagine being like, afraid of heights and you're like this is your only way out would y'all okay if you're afraid of heights would you if it was like a chance to save your life would you like face your fear i feel like everyone would maybe that's cap but like facing your fear of like going up on like high heights and like flying on a ram like there's no way a ram flying very steady you know what i mean it's a ram but it's to save your life like what else are you gonna go? What, like, what else are you gonna do? Like, get killed? Like, I feel like there's nothing scarier than being, like, killed. Like, you know? So they're on this long, like, flight, you know? And um, day eventually turns into night. And in the stars, like, Aries starts to point out, like, all the constellations, you know? But it's super cold that while it's at night. Like, keep that in mind. Cause they're flying, you know, in the air and now there's no sun to warm them up anymore. So it's getting cold. So Aries like starts to point out all the constellations and the stars of Gemini and Cancer in the sky. Like they're close to the stars, you know, and Aries is like, let me flex and like show these kids like something cool. Right? Cause I can imagine they had never flown before, you know, I mean, we're talking about mythology right now. Like there's no airplanes that they're riding on to like go to a different country or state or anything. While the, like, Aries is telling them this story, like, so, okay, it's like Aries, they're on Aries, and then it's like, Frix, like, this is Aries' head. It's like Frixis and then Heli. Like, Heli was, like, holding on to Frixis, and Frixis was holding on to, like, the rams, like, like, curls. Wool? Fleece. Fleece. So while he's, the, like, Aries is telling the story, like Frixis is like, oh wow. You know, cause he's closest to the ram's head. So like, he can probably hear like, Heli probably in the back like, right? <laughs> I know at least I would be, you know, like if you're flying all this wind is going past your ears and you're behind your bigger brother. So Shadi in the back probably like, what's going on? Huh? What? Hmm? Didn't catch that. But Heli is also in the back like freezing. Like her fingers are like starting to lose grip because it's so cold up there. Like, and she's such a small child, you know? And it's just like, not very cash money. She's not having a great time. Like Frix is in the front like, oh cool, look at the stars, oh my god. And Helly in the back like, oh my fucking god, it's so fucking cool. So like, spoiler alert, um, this huge gust of wind comes and Helly actually falls. Like Helly like couldn't grip onto her brother any longer. Like, and like they weren't really paying attention to her, unfortunately. And so Heli like falls. Immediately her brother knows this is because he like felt her like, like, cause I assume she was holding on to him. So he probably like felt her like all of a sudden was just like gone. 
Sorry, I had to do some things off camera because I couldn't focus, but Ellie literally falls off this ramp. Okay, and then the ram and like Fixus are like, oh my god. And then they immediately like turn around and they're like gonna try to like swoop down and like pick her up, like Spider-Man that bitch and like pick her up right, right before she hits the ground, right? Okay, it's just gonna be like cool cash money, like, okay, like we all made it. When they turn back around to go like rush to like go pick her up and like save her before she falls to the earth, um, it's too late. Yeah, I know. This is kind of a sad story. It gets worse, I promise. It's too late. Her body is crashed on these jagged rocks in the like mount that they were passing over. And there's no good way to put that. Yeah. Um, so they collect her remains silently um because they weren't just gonna leave her there and they continue on their journey to Colchis, but not flying as high this time but it's like couldn't you just think like she's a small girl you're her bigger brother why would she not go in front of you on the ram like and like shouldn't you pay more attention to her i don't know men i don't know but it's like I guess he just wasn't thinking about something like that. But it's like, she's smaller than you. Like, wouldn't you like want to like hold her and like keep her on the ram? Like, well, I don't know, but like maybe you pay more attention to her. Anyways, imagine like, and then they're down there. Like they're like collecting her remains, it says. Like imagine picking up And just like carrying her the rest of the way like that imagine like escaping death literally escaping death just for her to die like make it make sense it doesn't like i don't know why honestly it was both their faults like in my opinion it was Frixus's fault and it was Aries' fault because like Aries was flying too high, they were getting too cold, and she lost grip because her fingers lost grip. Um, and it was Frixus's fault for not paying attention to her, but I guess this is just the way the story has to go. Like, who knows if this is even a real story? You know, it's mythology, but like still, like that's tough. That's tough. Like, oh my god, we're saved. My sister and I are gonna re live out the rest of our lives and like we're eventually gonna become like taking over the kingdom. Nope. Your sister dies because of something like so reckless too. Like it could have just been so easily prevented and avoided and it wasn't because they just weren't mm, just weren't thinking. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't even like harp on them too bad but like it's mythology, but like still, that's your sister. That's your, that's the person you, like for Aries, like that's the person you were supposed to save and she dies. Like nice one, bro. Anyways, they arrive at Colchis finally and the king welcomes them and like, you know, like shows, the, shows them some hospitality in his kingdom. He actually ends up, um, naming the crossing that they passed over after Heli and he names it Helis Mont in honor of her. So like, there's something, you know? <laughs> he did what he could, like he couldn't save her from the dead, but he was like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna respect her. I'm gonna name that after her. It's so sad, like it's such a sad story. I'm sorry it doesn't have a happy ending. So Firstus and Aries are like torn up over this you know as they should be like basically like mission failed for Aries and like I just lost my sister for Frixus and Frixus is like beating himself up because he's like he won't let go of the fact that he was like I would have rather died in her place like he like you know he's beating himself up about it heavy because like it it could have been prevented and like now there's no getting her back so Frixus is like literally just like deep depression. 
Like he's like, I want to go home. I want to go home to be sacrificed. I should be sacrificed in turn for like letting her die. Like I need, I need to like, I need to end my life and like have my life be ended because I was the reason my sister died. Like he's blaming himself for all of it. And he wants to like pay for it. He wants to like really pay for like what he feels like he's done to her. And like, he doesn't feel like he deserves life anymore. It's like, this is a lot for a kid to be going through. Can you imagine? Like they're both just kids. Like it doesn't really disclose how old they are, but like they are children. And I know like Helly was younger than him, but like he's still a child just as much. And to lose your sister like that is um, it's really crazy. Like I'd be beating myself up too. I don't know if I'd come to that conclusion, but if I felt like I was the reason my sister died, that would that would be hard to live with. So Frixus is literally like trying to walk home. Like he's like, nah, like take me home. I want to go home and be sacrificed. Like I don't want to live anymore because of what I did. Sorry, I need my mirror a lot closer. So Aries actually like stops Frixus and he's like, no, you're not going to die too. Like I was sent here to save both of you guys. I can't have you both dying. And I can't have you having no will to live anymore either. It's like pointless, you know? Oh dang, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. I might see you guys in a second, hang on. So Aries like talks to Frixus and he's like, don't be fucking stupid. Like, this is my fault. Like, I'm the one, it was my sole purpose to come here and say to both of you, and I failed. Like, don't be stupid and go kill yourself too. Or like, have yourself be sacrificed for her. Because like, I'm the one that was supposed to save both of you. It's not your fault, it's my fault because I had the responsibility of like saving you. Like Aries is literally like, I failed because I flew too high. Like I got too cocky in my flying, flew too high. It wasn't safe for you guys. And she passed, she fell. Aries is like, if anyone should be sacrificed in this situation, it's me. Like it's Aries fault essentially. Like Aries is the one that holds responsibility for whatever happened like it you can't blame the fucking kid for that so aries ends up asking Frixus to kill him um for heli's death as a like sacrifice to the gods for the means of like not getting his task done like he was sent aries was sent by the king of the gods for the sole purpose of saving the both of them and he failed period and so he felt that he should be sacrificed for what he had done there's a lot of sacrifice going on in this that night under the stars Frixus killed Ares um, he was slain next to the fire um, and Frixus laid by his side crying holding the ram's wool in his hands that's a lot for a kid to go through. Like he just experienced two deaths in one day and he had to like murder an animal. Like, he literally had to murder the person that saved him. Person, animal, being that saved him. But it was kind of like a situation where it was like, okay, like something had to be done for the death of Heli. Like they both felt like, like something had to be made right somehow. And that was, the answer for them so it's like this beautiful sacrifice and he slays him under the stars next to the roaring fire like i think that like details so i don't know kind of beautiful you know for the whole story um so he's sitting Frix frixus is sitting here like holding the fleece of the ram that saved his life like you know he owes his life to this ram essentially and he's sitting here post killing him holding his fur his fleece when he's holding the fur i would just call it fur. when he's holding this fleece when he's holding this fleece like crying into it you know um all of a sudden it starts to turn gold like it, it literally this white fleece starts to turn golden and i mean as as shocking as it was Frixus took this like as a sign from the god. Oh, my hair's a mess. Frixus, Frixus took this as like a sign from the gods. Like, oh my god, his fleece just turned gold. Like, 
like that has to be from the gods like they're telling me this is their way of telling me like i've done the right thing i'm sure to receive that confirmation like makes all the difference like makes it all worth it not the fact that his sister died but like makes it worth it to kill the being that saved his life because i can imagine that's a tough decision to make so as for Phrixus, um, that's kind of where his story ends, you know, for our story today at least. Um, you know, he he sacrifices Ares for the gods. He gets that sign from the gods that it was the right choice. Um, and we don't know much about the, him other than that, but basically his life went on. Life goes on and on. Like, his life went on, you know? He always was going to remember his sister, and he was always going to remember the ram for his nobility and, like, what he did for him, you know? he He's alive because of the ram. It's unfortunate that the ram had to die as well. Um, but he went on with his life, you know? He, he, he lived. <laughs> At least he did. <laughs> but that's not where our story ends, you see. We still have to tie out the Ares side of things. So Ares is sacrificed, but like we still get the story of like his conscious being, his conscious soul. Um, so Ares feels his 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 spirit, uh, his being, his his conscious. He feels his spirit rise all the way to the heavens, like when he's sacrificed. So he feels himself like rise all the way to the heavens, like. Um, and amongst the stars, you know, like where the gods are. And he hears the voice of Jupiter. You know, like, it's like, oh my God, like God just spoke to me. So Jupiter like speaks to Ares and he like thanks him for coming back like as a sacrifice. And like that, he was like impressed with him for making that decision, you know? Like that's like, he fully had a choice like to live and he chose to sacrifice himself because of like, the fact that he failed and what he he was sent to do. So Jupiter tells Ares that like for his bold, oh this is hard to do, like for his bold action in doing that, that he is going to grant him a place amongst the stars. Like when you're a constellation, you're immortalized. Like you, that is like a higher gift than even like being a god. Like being immortalized in the stars, like is like, of high honor and it's like it doesn't happen for no reason like to be a constellation like in the stars forever like and that's your being like i don't really understand how like the how it works like how are you like a star but you're like conscious but like are you're immortal but like i don't really know how that works like to be honest with you but i do know that like being a constellation is like one of the highest honors and like one of the best things you can be, you know, like not everybody like expects to be a constellation, but like, it's like, wow, like the, you're a great, like you're, you're an all time great one to be a constellation or like to be gifted that honor. So you guys, that is basically it for our story today. Um, that is why you see Aries constellation in the sky currently, or that is the mythology behind why. Um, it's a story of bold action, passionate emotion, a story of death in a way that tells the value of life, um, and a story that's fitting for Aries, you know? Aries are enthusiastic, optimistic people that prefer to look for situations rather than ruminate over a plan. You know, he takes the action and flies super high in the sky rather than thinking about like, oh, maybe I shouldn't because these are kids and like they're going to get cold when it turns to the night. Um, but the first zodiac sign of the astrological calendar representing youth or infant of the zodiac. And that's kind of why like, you know, the story involves kids as well because um, it's the youngest sign. Um, and Aries are also known for like, you know, kind of causing chaos. Um, if you know an Aries out there, I'm sure you know that their energy is kind of like very youthful, very youthful energy. Um, and so if you know an Aries or if you are an Aries yourself, like maybe you can relate to this story or see how it relates to the people that you know that are Aries. Um, 
that's why I wanted to share this uh, mythology series with you guys because I had listened to this podcast like back in the summer and actually like really wanted to share this information because I'm not like a super like into astrology person at all but I do really like see what signs people are like now that I know the, the mythology behind them like I don't really know like oh you're you're a cancer of course you'd be like that or like you know I'm not really like that person or I haven't been in the past but since like um really like learning about the mythology of it all and like realizing like oh I can tell how like signs do affect like people and how they behave um simple things like like oh like of course like those are my airpods <laughs> simple things like of course like the cancer would want to stay home or like the Jim and I would change the plans or like, you know, a bunch of stuff that you guys are like going to get to know within the series, but I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys like realize like the connection with my makeup too. I matched the uh, makeup to my outfit. Oh, sorry. That's my makeup back. I matched the makeup to my outfit because Aries is a fire sign. Aries is a little crazy, a little bit fiery energy. And then I tried to do a wing. Little cute little wing, <laughs> literally winged eyeliner, but like to represent the wings on the ram. Um, I don't really know who all made it through the entire video, but I appreciate you guys for sticking it out with me and learning a little bit more about astrology and mythology. So that has been my, my first episode of. I'm not sure what I want to call it yet. I've been like brainstorming ideas, something along the lines of like mythology and makeup, makeup and mythology, something like that. If you guys have any suggestions, if you guys have any suggestions for what sign you want me to do next, I might do Taurus next and go in the Zodiac calendar like timeline. But if you guys have any suggestions that you really want to see, or like have any suggestions for what makeup you want to see me do during these series like definitely let me know down in the comments below remember to like and subscribe so you can never miss out on next week's video that's going to be another mythology video so if you guys enjoyed please leave a like it means a lot to me comment too if you enjoyed it means a lot to me to hear back from you guys um Anyways, this series is like had a long time coming and I'm like taking forever wrapping up this video, whatever. Um, it's been a long time coming. I kind of got sick with COVID so I couldn't film and then other things got in the way, but I'm glad that it's finally out and it's finally here and I'm so excited for you guys to see it. So I'll see you guys next week, kitty cats.